ever felt like New York just has too much to see and do? In this video, I'll be breaking down the 10 best attractions to visit. We've got the iconic ones and a few hidden gems you might have missed. Let's dive right in. You can sit on a crowded tour bus or you can be guided in a 1920s era car. I think a decision's pretty easy. It's a 1930 Hudson Gray 8, the Hudson Company's first sports car. What do you say we get some photos in front of it? Let's do it. Okay, but before we do, I have some 20s accessories to get you in the mood. You're gonna be a celebrity for the next 50 minutes. This car gets a lot of attention. You're gonna get a lot of A-OKs, thumbs ups, a lot of waves. Just think of them as paparazzi when you're the celebrities here. Arnold Rothstein was the king of New York gamblers. He loved to gamble. He ran casinos in Times Square, and he bet on horses upstate. Made a lot of money. Jimmy Fallon came up to the car in a rocket car. Show. We did a custom pickup and drop off for a British supermodel, Cara Delevingne. Normally, we visit New York City attractions. Today, we are the attraction. You have to be stuck in midtown Manhattan traffic. This is the way to do it. I'm not even noticing a traffic. I don't think I've ever been in a car this old before. Are you? No. Well, my grandpa's, but I don't think it was this old. Now, that statue you see uh, with a Tiffany clock, I think it's the largest Tiffany clock in the world, it depicts Hercules, Minerva, and Mercury, the gods of strength, wisdom, and speed. That was like stepping back in time, literally and figuratively. I I've never taken a driving tour quite like that one. Just made us feel like we wanted to go back in time for real. New York has dozens of boat tours, but I don't think any will give you the insights that the official NYC architecture cruise will. We're gonna explore the sixth borough, the waterfront. This is very classy. It's a 1920s style yacht world. If you are into history, this is the boat tour for you. We have a real architect who is narrating the entire skyline as we go. So we're gonna be traveling about 30 miles, going all the way around the island of Manhattan. Two towers connected by a sky bridge. That sky bridge houses a many space for the apartment complex, including a 75 foot lap pool. So you can swim back and forth from tower to tower, 300 feet in the air. That green you see is patinated copper. Very thin copper sheets, about the thickness of two pennies. Something super unique about this tour is we are way up the Harlem River right now. I've never been on a boat this far up, and we're passing 18 bridges in total. We are wrapping back towards the Hudson River and it feels like we're on a fall foliage cruise. It's beautiful views. Does it even feel like we're in New York anymore? I've driven over the George Washington Bridge hundreds of times. I have never gone underneath by boat. I'm even excited for this. Tallest tower at Hudson Yard, to the left of the vessel and set back there. Less than 30 people on board, intimate experience. I learned so much. It takes a lot for a tour to impress me. This impressed me a lot. As a first time tourist, there's a lot of pressure to visit an observation deck. Now, we did an entire video visiting all five in one day if you need an in-depth look at each of them. And I'll reveal my personal favorite at the end, but I think all five have some benefits. One World Observatory, this is the highest viewing point in the Western Hemisphere, atop One World Trade, and it's entirely indoors if you don't want to be exposed to the elements. I also think the elevator ride up is by far the best one in the city, showing you how New York was built. Its location at the bottom of Manhattan gives you some clear views of the horizon. My issue with it, I really think you need to step outside at least a little bit, and you don't have that option here. Next, the Empire State Building. This is the most famous building in the United States, maybe the world, so it's got that star factor, and I appreciate the Art Deco vibes all over. This observation deck has grown on me in recent visits. I think for history buffs, this is a can't miss. The Edge Sky Deck. Well, this wins the award for highest outdoor sky deck in the Western Hemisphere, and the views from the angled glass are quite unique. It gives you the feeling like you're floating in midair, and if you're willing to shell out $201 a person, in, you could do city climb where you literally lean off a skyscraper. 
top of the rock. This is probably the most underrated observation deck because it only goes 70 floors up, which is the shortest vantage point. But the Danny DeVito of observation decks packs a big punch because it's right in the middle of the Midtown skyscraper scene, making you feel more part of it. And it's my second favorite, Summit One Vanderbilt. This is my personal favorite because you get what I truly consider an indoor attraction with a glass mirrors and reflections everywhere and a few other neat rooms and then an opportunity to go outside and still enjoy the skyline. Optional elevator ride ascent to the top if you're feeling daring, but all of these observation decks are bookable in the description and it's really tough to go wrong with any of them. Now you may be wondering why is the Highline not in this video? Well, this is just paid attractions. We're gonna have a free attraction video coming up soon. Broadway is the world's most famous theater district and I would say it can't miss when you're in the city. Even living here, I get excited to go and Adriana and I just recently booked tickets to see MJ the Musical for the first time. Now I'm a huge fan of 70s and 80s music and I have to give them credit. The choreography and songs were on point. They play over 25 of Michael Jackson's greatest hits and it's won some Tony Awards. But from musicals to plays, remakes of old movies like Back to the Future, there is something for everybody on Broadway. And if you wanna learn more about attending a Broadway show, check out this video we recently filmed with a Broadway insider on the topic. I'd like to thank a sponsor of today's video, Get Your Guide. They got us tickets for the official NYC Architecture Cruise and MJ the Musical on Broadway. Get Your Guide is the best place to unlock the world's most unforgettable experiences for travelers. They offer over 60,000 curated experiences in more than 3,600 destinations worldwide. And if you could think of an experience in New York, they probably offer it too. Their experiences are provided by knowledgeable local experts, and the best part is you can do it all on your phone. I booked every single ticket from their handy app, no printing, no waiting in line, nothing annoying. They also have 24-7 support, free cancellation up to 24 hours before, and skip the line value. The good news is any type of boat tour, observation deck, or attraction you want to book, you can do it directly with Get Your Guide. Link down below in the description. Get Your Guide is a game changer in any city in the world, especially New York. Give them a look. There's few museums in the world you know exactly where they are just based off their name. The Louvre in Paris, the Smithsonian in DC, and the Met in New York. It's the largest art museum in the Americas and welcomes over three million visitors a year. And well, you could spend a whole day in there. Although in this video we shot last year, we show you how to do it right in just two hours. The Temple of Dender is my personal favorite, but you can find Van Gogh, Rembrandt, Vermeer, and the list goes on and on. Insider tip, head to the rooftop for a really amazing view of Central Park. And if you're a big fan of art, I recommend booking a guide. See the link in the description if you're interested. The symbol of American freedom, the Statue of Liberty. And this is probably the most famous attraction in the city. Now, I will note that visiting the statue in Ellis Island, which is included in the ticket, will eat up at least half a day. So it may not be worth doing if you have a very limited time in the city, but the whole experience can give you goosebumps, starting with taking the ferry over to Liberty Island and having the same view that millions of immigrants had approaching New York Harbor. And just admiring the statue up close is really special. But I've said this on many videos, if you can book a ticket to get inside of the crown, it is well worth it. Because walking up that narrow staircase and seeing the inner workings of the sculpture capped off with a view through the crown is a once in a lifetime experience. But you normally have to book this months in advance and you have to do it on the Statue Cruises website. And yes, you can see the statue for free by taking the Staten Island Ferry but if you can budget the time for it, it is certainly worth it. New York has world-class art museums and a world-class history and science museum. The American Museum of Natural History. Maybe you recognize the facade from Night at the Museum with Ben Stiller. I still think this is one of the best places for families with children to visit. What's not to love? I mean, who doesn't get excited about dinosaur fossils? Or how about the massive 21,000 pound model of a blue whale? And here's a little tip. Don't miss out on the brand new Gilder Center Wing, which we featured on a video as one of New York's top new attractions in the past year. The architecture is breathtaking and they've got some amazing add-ons like a 
live butterfly vivarium and an immersive invisible worlds experience, which do have extra admission charges. There's also an insectarium. They'll make learning fun, I promise. Families or anyone with a love for science definitely needs to give this a look. Where are my history buffs at? The intrepid sea, air, and space museum should be on your radar. Pun fully intended because this is a decommissioned aircraft carrier that even served in the Pacific during World War II. Yep, this thing has stories. You're not just staring at photos on a wall. You are face to face with historic aircraft or a prototype of the space shuttle enterprise. How about my personal favorite, the Growler, a formerly commissioned submarine. You get to feel what it was like to live inside there. If you have an interest in military history, the Intrepid is a fantastic choice. If you want to see New York from a completely different perspective, then the iconic Five Bridges bike tour is the answer. It's a guided tour with a native New Yorker, Rick, who will be talking in your ear the whole time. You'll be e-biking over five iconic bridges, including the Williamsburg, Manhattan, and Brooklyn bridges. And while I'm someone that generally isn't that confident in biking in the city, Rick made it super simple and I saw New York in a completely different light. You'll bike through a lot of neighborhoods that you probably wouldn't have visited otherwise, and you'll definitely get pictures and perspectives that no other tour will offer. And if this tour isn't for you, Rick also offers e-bike tours around Central Park and other famous spots in the city. So give his website a look, tell him I said hi. I may be just a little bit biased here since I'm a Yankees fan, but a trip to Yankee Stadium is a true New York experience. Now here's a little secret the Yankees don't advertise too much. You can bring your own food into the stadium for individual consumption. So if you're on a budget, you can stop at a local bodega or deli and grab food to go. But they do have some fantastic concessions like the 99 burger named after Aaron Judge or a classic steak sandwich from LaBelle's. And well, the team lately hasn't been great, but it's still a fun time. Sit in the bleachers if you're young and want a more lively vibe. And don't sleep on the Yankees Museum inside. It's free and has some incredible memorabilia. Knowing where to go in New York is just half the battle on your trip. The other half is what mistakes you need to avoid. And in this video, we share 11 things you should never do in New York. Watch this next.